It's been a while since I last made a video, huh? I think it's over a year since I last went on the air. Except for when I live stream, but we don't count that. Maybe we should. I think it's high noon that I act high noon. High time that I actually make a video. And as the title probably already told you, today we're gonna be focusing a bit on microphones. We're gonna check out how a couple of microphones sound, and I'm gonna give you a sound test of them. And none of them have any filters or anything. And so the first one up on the chopping block is the good old venerable Blue Snowball Ice. It is, as you just saw, the classic ball. It's a Ryan microphone. I think it's the lightest one in the bunch. Let me see, how, how much did I write? Did I say, yeah, it's 460 grams, it says on the web, but you can see on when I put it on the scale, I wish I remembered how much it was on the scale. I really should have put that one in the manuscript. Why didn't I do that? Well, you see how much it weighs, uh, my example here, and that's with the stand. Uh, speaking of the stand, it's actually a really great little stand because you can have it out like this when you put it on the table but you can also fold it up and it almost becomes like a selfie stick which I, which now I can carry the microphone I can like I can use it like this like reporter does it so I actually I like the stand it's it's a little bit flimsy I'm not sure if I want it. it has some play you can see it has some play it's not it's not uh, like a three hundred dollar microphone something of 3000 krona. It's not like that, but it's a good microphone, I think. And it, for shorter periods, I don't mind holding it like this, even though you would want to put it on an arm such as this. But I don't have the adapter for it, so I'm going to hold it like this. And I'm actually going to put it down when I'm going to speak of the pattern, because I want, to, I want you to uh, hear how it sounds when it's on the table. There we go. It is on the table probably, oh, what could that be? 30 centimeters, 300 millimeters from me. Speaking of the pattern for this mic, it's a cardioid pattern. So the sound from the front of the microphone is being picked up. Well, now I'm picking it up again. While the sound from the sides and especially the back is being rejected. Now I'm speaking from the back and you can hear how it sounds. You do not want to put it like this. You want it like this. Now it's picking me up. And inside we have, I'm gonna put it back. Inside we have a condenser element. And the thing with condensers is they're very sensitive. They work perfect for a mic such as this. When the source of the sound is quite far away from the mic, you want it being a condenser mic. And another thing, for this mic and for the coming mic, uh, you're going to want to adjust the levels in Windows. This one I'm keeping at 100% because of the distance. But you want to adjust the level. The, it's, I'm not sure if it's the gain, but it's the level at which Windows accept the sound. And I found you sometimes need to adjust that. Same as with a microphone like this, you gotta adjust the gain. Back to the snowball. I think it's quite a portable and actually quite a good little microphone. It, it doesn't have the best sound and you can hear, at least from what I've heard in the test recordings, you hear quite a lot of room in the thing. So it's not the best if you want to narrate over something unless you have a studio environment, but I think you'd still want to go with a higher end microphone. But for say voiceovers when you're doing a game or you're speaking with friends on Discord or Slack or whatever the popular platform is nowadays. I think it's a perfect microphone for that, especially if you can get it close to your face with like a small, if you can get a cheaper arm, like a newer, uh, the new arms. That was handling problems. <laughs> we just lost the microphone. After having said that, Let's go over to the Rode NT-USB Mini. 
Okay, over to our next contender. The Rode MT USB Mini. A compact, nice little microphone, which is surprisingly hefty. <laughs> For its small size, it weighs actually a lot. I think it's a beautiful little microphone, and from what I've heard, it sounds quite well. Though it weighs in at a quite hefty, and I think my scale is actually going to agree with me on this one, about 585 grams. Or you could see in the clip what it actually weighs, what my scale says. Now, this is a condenser microphone with a cardioid pickup pattern, and it's going to be a repeat of the Snowball, as it's also bus powered through the USB cable. Although this time, it's a USB-C cable, so, as in my case, you need a USB-C to USB-A adapter. But they can be had for cheap. It's not, I think you, if you buy this new, you get that cable included. I didn't get it since I bought it second hand. But I got a bunch of other cables, I have no idea what I'm going to do with them. <laughs> so I'm actually using the cable for my Stream Deck to power the microphone. I know this isn't the most beautiful setup in the world, but I wanted to show you how it sounds when it is connected to a arm. And so now I'm speaking right into it and I'm about, I would say, 30 millimeters, 40, 30, 40 millimeters away from it. But the fun doesn't stop with the condenser and the cardioid pickup pattern and the USB-C cable and all that, because we have a little knob on the front here. And this little knob is actually the volume knob for the 3.5mm headphone output on the back. And pushing it activates the monitoring. And so then you can just uh, adjust the knob to adjust the volume, which you're hearing in your headphones. Which is a really nifty little feature. The problem though, the problem though with this that I found, and again going back to having to adjust the volume levels in Windows, is that you can, it can sound really well when you're speaking into it like it did for me, but then my friend, he said that, well, I was ear raping him. So be a little wary of that and do a test recording with no filters just to see how it sounds. Or I think something like apps like Discord have uh, the... Ch so overall, I would say great little microphone, solid choice, I would definitely recommend it, but I would definitely do a test recording before putting it into service. Which, you, let's face it, you should always do that with, with every microphone, no matter what you got. You should do a test recording. But especially with this one, since the levels can be a bit unpredictable. But it's a great little microphone, and for the money, you're getting a lot of mic. On to the last one. The Rode Pod Mic. So, the Rode Pod Mic. And I actually managed to say that name correctly. I'm proud. Welcome to my main mic. It's the Rode Pod Mic XLR. This is the first one. The, you might say the version one. They have a blacked out, which I personally don't like. I like the silver accent. Um, they have a blacked out version with a USB connection, and I'm not sure if it also has the XLR. This one is only XLR. And this is by far the heaviest microphone that we have today. Weighing in at a impressive 937, or whatever my scale says, grams. So it's almost a kilogram of microphone that we have going on here, which is why this one by far is the one that most requires a arm. Now, whilst the pickup pattern continues in cardioid mode, as per our other microphones, this is our first dynamic microphone we have. What that means is that this mic won't pick up as much sound as the condenser microphones. As you probably noticed, I'm close enough to this thing where I could practically give you a kiss. Whereas the other microphones, they heard me perfectly well standing on the table a good 30, 40 centimeters away from me. The good thing about dynamics though, is background noise, it's much harder for it to hear it. It's a lot quieter by default. Now, 
An XLR microphone like this one requires a interface to be able to pipe your audio into the computer. You cannot just plug this thing into a USB port and it'll work. No, no, no. Since this has the XLR connection, that needs to be converted using a, I think it's called a DAC, digital to audio converter. And in my case, I'm using a Mo2 M4, but you could, a po another popular choice, which I've heard mixed reviews about, I personally would not recommend them, but they're very popular and can be found for dirt cheap sometimes, is the Scarlett Focusrite series. And I also have a Clark Technic Mic Booster CT1, which I think is like 30 dBs of clean gain that one gives me. Since again, it's a very, this is a very quiet microphone. I have my gain, remember, this is behind the mic booster. So I'm already gaining it before it reaches my interface and I have my interface, interface at about 11 o'clock. And then I have, I think it's 16 dBs of clean gain in OBS. Another thing to note with the pod mic is you only get this part of the microphone. All of this, you do not get. You have no stand, no nothing. So when you buy it, you have to get either some kind of a desk stand for it, or as I've done, a mic arm. Because this thing doesn't come with any way to mount it other than the screw here. So that's something to keep in mind. This is by far the most expensive microphone which we've looked at today and the one that requires the most preparation because you have to have some kind of an interface for it. It could be like when I started out, I had a mixer table sitting off to the side, which functioned as my DAC. And I also got some nice features with being able to adjust uh, bass, level, bass, mid and treble. So it gave me a lot of fun things to do there, but it required, like I said, you have to have a interface, some way to mount it like a boom arm, and then a XLR cable. And if you want, as in my case, which I, what I needed to do to not have to crank the gain all the way up and absolutely butcher my Motu sound card, even though it did it perfectly well, was a inline mic booster and an additional XLR cable. So to do like I have done, you need five things. Whereas with something like the Rode uh, NT USB mini, you only need a USB A to USB C cable and you're ready to go. So that's something to keep in mind. But I think the audio from this one is definitely, well, the best one. I, otherwise I wouldn't have it as a daily driver. I love this mic. So let's see, moving on to final thoughts. Now you've heard the mics in action and I've not done any editing except for uh, equalize, equalizing the levels. No filters, no nothing. And all of these, they're great mics and they have their place. And since I'm a huge advocate for buying secondhand and this is the only mic which I actually bought new, the other ones all are secondhand mics, I would recommend looking around a bit. If eBay is your main place, try it there. If say you're in Sweden, I would recommend Tradera or Blocket. They are great places which is actually where I got these mics and the boom arm and quite a lot of my other equipment as well. So I highly recommend doing that and with a bit of patience and some luck in the deal hunting you can get them at great prices. In fact the camera you're seeing me on right now everything with that except for the dummy battery uh, is second hand even the capture card camlink 4k everything is second hand and you can see how and it's working really well i haven't had any troubles but i hope this town test was helpful to some of you and maybe even you found out a microphone that you would like to try for yourself and i wish you the best of luck in finding a good deal on it or maybe you just like people rambling on and uh, talking into different kind of microphones which that works too but I think we're done for the day. I'm not going to waste any more of your time. Bye-bye.